Welcome aboard, fellow enthusiasts, as we embark on another incredible video. Welcome, curious minds, to our video that explores the ins and outs of wives of Genghis Khan. There were many wives and concubines of Genghis Khan, as was common for powerful Mongol men of the time. Wives and concubines were frequently acquired from conquered territory, and, in the case of Genghis Khan, sometimes whole empires, and the women enrolled as either his wives or concubines were often princesses or queens that were either taken captive or gifted to him. Genghis Khan gave several of his high-status wives their own orders or camps to live in and manage. Each camp also contained junior wives, concubines, and even children. It was the job of the Keshid Mongol Imperial Guard to protect the yurts of Genghis Khan's wives. The guards had to pay particular attention to the individual yurt and camp in which Genghis Khan slept, which could change every night as he visited different wives. When Genghis Khan set out on his military conquests, he usually took one wife with him and left the rest of his wives and concubines to manage the empire in his absence. Now, let's shift our attention to Bert. The marriage between Bert and Genghis Khan men known as Timjin was arranged by her father and Yesiji, Timjin's father, when she was ten and he was nine years old. Timjin stayed with her and her family until he was called back to take care of his mother and younger siblings, due to the poisoning of Yesiji by Tatar nomads. In 1178, about seven years later, Timjin travelled downstream along the Karun River to find Bert. When Bert's father saw that Timjin had returned to marry Bert, he had the pair united as man and wife. With the permission of her father, Timjin took Bert and her mother to live in his family yacht. Bert's dowry was a fine black sable jacket. Soon after the marriage between them took place, the three Merkits attacked their family camp at dawn and kidnapped Bert. She was given to one of their warriors as a spoil of war. Timjin was deeply distressed by the abduction of his wife and remarked that his bed was made empty and his breast was torn apart. Timjin rescued her several months later with the aid of his allies Wang Kon and Jamaka. Many scholars describe this event as one of the key crossroads in Timjin's life, which moved him along the path towards becoming a conqueror. As the pillaging and plundering went on, Timjin moved among the people that were hurriedly escaping, calling, a Bert, Bert. And so he came upon her, for Lady Bert was among those fleeing people. She heard the voice of Timjin and, recognizing it, she got off the cart and came running towards him. Although it was still night, Lady Bert and Kozakin both recognized Timjin's reins and tether and grabbed them. It was moonlight, he looked at them, recognized Lady Bert, and they fell into each other's arms. The Secret History of the Mongols Bert was held captive for eight months, and gave birth to Jockey soon after she was rescued. This left doubt as to who the father of the child was, because her captor took her as a wife and could have possibly impregnated her. Despite this, Timjin let Jockey remain in the family and claimed him as his own son. Bert had three more sons, Chagate, Igedi, and Toli. Timjin had many other children with other wives, but they were excluded from the succession. Only Bert's sons could be considered to be his heirs. Bert was also the mother to several daughters, Kuyujin Bekitchekaiken, Olakhebeki, Tmelin, and Altalan. However, the poor survival of Mongol records means it is unclear whether she gave birth to all of them. In this chapter, we'll be unraveling the enigma of Yesijin and discovering its transformative power. During his military campaign against the Tatars, Timjin fell in love with Yesijin and took her in as a wife. She was the daughter of a Tatar leader named Yik Cheren that Timjin's army had killed during battle. After the military campaign against the Tatars was over, Yesijin, one of the survivors, went to Timjin, who slept with her. According to the secret history of the Mongols, while they were having sex Yesijin asked Timjin to treat her well and to not discard her. When Timjin seemed to agree with this, Yesijin recommended that he also marry her sister Yesu. Both the Tatar sisters, Yesijin and Yesu, became a part of Timjin's principal wives and were given their own camps to manage. Timjin also took a third woman from the Tatars, an unknown concubine. 
In the upcoming section, we'll be dissecting Yesu and exploring its implications in greater detail. At the recommendation of her sister Yesujin, Timjin had his men track down and kidnap Yesu. When she was brought to Timjin, he found her every bit as pleasing as promised and so he married her. The other wives, mothers, sisters and daughters of the Tatars had been parceled out and given to Mongol men. The Tatar sisters, Yesujin and Yesu, were two of Genghis Khan's most influential wives. Genghis Khan took Yesu with him when he set out on his final expedition against the Tangut Empire. Let's now turn our attention to Qun and uncover the fascinating insights it brings to the table. Qun entered Mongol history when her father, the Merkit leader Daya Asan, surrendered to Timjin in the winter of and gave her to him. But, at least according to the secret history of the Mongols, Qun and her father were detained by Nayas, one of Timjin's officers, who was apparently trying to protect them from Mongol soldiers who were nearby. After they arrived three days later than expected, Timjin suspected that Nayas was motivated by his carnal feelings towards Hulan to help her and her father. While Timjin was interrogating Nayas, Hulan spoke up in his defense and invited Timjin to have sex with her and inspect her virginity personally, which pleased him. In the end, Timjin accepted Daya Usun's surrender and Hulan as his new wife. However, Daya Usun later retracted his surrender but he and his subjects were eventually subdued, his possessions plundered, and he himself killed. Timjin continued to carry out military campaigns against the Merkits until their final dispersal in 1218. Hulan was able to achieve meaningful status as one of Timjin's wives and managed one of the large wifely camps, in which other wives, concubines, children and animals lived. She gave birth to a son named Gelijian, who went on to participate with Bert's sons in their father's military campaigns. As we enter this new phase, let's uncover the impact of Mijkatan on our broader topic. Mijkatan was a concubine of Genghis Khan and she later became a wife of his son Ejili Khan. The Persian historian Otomalik Yuvani records that Mijkatan was given to Chinggis Khan by a chief of the Bakrin tribe, and he loved her very much. Ejidi favoured her as well and she accompanied him on his hunting expeditions. She is not recorded as having any children. Welcome to the next segment, where we explore Jerbisu and its significance in our journey. Jerbisu was an empress of Karakite, Mongol Empire, and Naaman. She was a renowned beauty on the plains. She was originally a favoured concubine of Inanch Bilge Khan and after his death, she became the consort of his son Taong Khan. Since Taong Khan was a useless ruler, Jerbisu was in control of almost all power in name and politics. She had a daughter named Princess Hun who with Yel Zilig, the ruler of Liao. After Genghis Khan destroyed the name and tribe and Taong Khan was killed, Jerbisu made several offensive remarks regarding Mongols, describing their clothes as dirty and smelly. Yet, she abruptly rescinded her claims and visited Genghis Khan's tent alone. He questioned her about the remarks, but was immediately attracted to her beauty. After spending the night with him, Jebisu promised to serve him well and he took her as one of his impresses. Her status was only inferior to Hulan and Bort. In this chapter, we'll be unraveling the enigma of the Bokbeki and discovering its transformative power. Bok was the eldest daughter of the Karate leader Jakagamu, who allied with Genghis Khan to defeat the Naamans in 1204. As part of the alliance, Bok was given to Genghis Khan as a wife. She was the sister of Begtmish, who married Genghis Khan's son Joki, and Sorbetanibiki, who married Genghis Khan's son Toli. After about two years of childless marriage, Genghis Khan abruptly divorced Ibok and gave her to the general Jokeji, a member of the Oruz clan and who had killed Jakagamu after the latter turned against Genghis Khan. The exact reason for this remarriage is unknown. According to the secret history of the Mongols, Genghis Khan gave Ibok to Jokeji as a reward for his service in wounding Nildasengam in 1203 and, later, in killing Jakagamu. Conversely, Rashid al-Din in Jamie al-Tawarik claims that Genghis Khan divorced Ibok due to a nightmare in which God commanded him to give her away immediately, and Jakeji happened to be guarding the tent. 
regardless of the rationale, Genghis Khan allowed Ibok to keep her title as kitten even in her remarriage, and asked that she would leave him a token of her dowry by which he could remember her. The sources also agree that Ibok was quite wealthy. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought of this video.